everyone. I am so excited to start this quilt. I've been wanting to do it for a while. Pat Sloan, um, she's doing a library quilt along. This is from her book, Holiday Hoopla. I'll leave a link to it down below where you can find a copy. I am going to be making some changes to mine though. I want it to look more like a bookshelf and I also want it to be a lot bigger than it is. So I'm going to be adding some rows and blocks to it to make it bigger. If you want to see how that's going to turn out, be sure to stick around and subscribe for more. I have the pieces cut out for my first block and I'm only cutting out one block at a time because I don't have space to store everything and it just makes it easier for me. I have all my pieces laid out on my design board in the exact order that I want them. And then I'm just going to take two pieces and sew them together and then shove the next two through the sewing machine. I just find it goes a lot faster if I do it like this. But if you're worried about getting your pieces mixed up, there's nothing wrong with just doing them one at a time or even using alphabetes to lay them out there. I had left mine upstairs. I was working on a different project in my kitchen and I was too lazy to go get my alphabetes because, well, I don't like stairs. But anyways, so I'm just going to sew as whatever I can and then I'm going to take them over to the ironing board and I'm going to give them a good press and then I will come back and then lay them back on my design board in the order that I want them and then start sewing the next sections together until I have my whole block complete. So here I'm just making sure that I have everything back the way I want it. I knew how I wanted to have it and I did take a picture of it with my phone just in case I did forget and then I would have some reference to look onto. I always take pictures of my blocks and quilts so that I know exactly where I had planned to put everything. And on Pat's quilt, there are some blocks or sections that are just background pieces, but I will be adding like other things to them because the one that's right beside this block is just supposed to be a background, but I'm going to attempt to make a leaning book. Hopefully that'll work out. I did find a video on Missouri Star Quilts Co. YouTube. I'll leave a link to that down below. And then uh, she had a really good tutorial and I apparently still struggled with it. But when I went back and rewatched the video, then I was just like, oh, okay, now it makes sense. And then... Uh, but anyways, you'll see, I'm going to show you how I did the leaning book and how I figured it out to make it fit where I wanted it. And I'll also leave a link to Pat Sloan's Facebook and YouTube channel in case you want to join in on this uh, quilt along. You'll also find other links in my description box for tools and stuff that I use. Um, here I have the first block done, but now I'm going to be making my leaning block. So here all I did is I cut two strips of fabric for the width that I wanted it. I can't give you the measurements for the other blocks, but this one I guess I could because this one isn't part of the book. My strips are two inches and then just whatever length. I cut a rectangle piece of fabric on the diagonal. It measures 16 by 6. And then I have my little strips there that I'm just going to lay in there. And once it's all sewn together, it'll actually make that book section look like it's on leaning. And then when you trim it up, I gave myself extra space for trimming just to make sure because you need to make sure that you have just the right amount of seam allowance there. Otherwise, it'll look like the book is just kind of floating there and that would look weird. I want it to look so that it's like touching the next book and leaning on there. So here I'm just making sure that I have all my pieces the right size and that I will be able to get the size block out of it that I need. And my book isn't going to be sticking over or looking getting cut off anywhere. It was a bit of a process, but I did get it figured out. Um, like I said, I will link Jenny's video below. She does a much better job of explaining it and I figured it out. And again, just double checking, making sure that I'm going to get the right size block out of here and then shifting my fabric where I need to so that it'll work out. And then all those cutoffs will either go in my scrap bin or I will use them for some of the other blocks if I can get the pieces out of there that I need. And just a little disclaimer here, if you use any of the links in my description box or in my bio, some of them are affiliate links, so I do receive a small commission if you make a purchase using them. It doesn't cost you anything extra, but um, I do get a little bit out of it and it helps support my channel. There's absolutely no pressure to use the links, but if you do, I am very thankful and grateful for everyone who supports it. Even just you watching supports my channel and I appreciate that. So I have my strips sewn onto the one side, so now we're just going to add the other side. I did put a little wonder clip there so that I wouldn't forget where I wanted to have that sit so that I could get that block size out that I needed. And once that's all done and ironed, I gave it a good press. And now I need to make sure that where that top of that book is, I leave a quarter of an inch, no more and no less, because I want that to be perfect for when I have it sewn to the other block and it'll lean on there nicely. And I had to turn it around because trying to figure everything out and making sure that I get it cut right. I guess I could have used my rotating cutting mat here, but again, that was upstairs and lazy me didn't want to go get it. And I think once I had checked the size like five or six times, making sure that I had it in the right spot and that I had my quarter inch there, I finally decided to make the cut and make sure that it was right and accurate because I didn't want to cut it too small. And these strips here, they will actually be perfect for like those little background pieces. So that's why I'm cutting one block at a time and then I can use all my little scraps for that and I'm not wasting any fabric. So just trim this one up and then it's going to look really nice next to the other one, I think. And I'm going to be doing some like flower pots and stuff in there too because why not? I think that would look cute. 
So here I have my two blocks. This will be for week one, and then next week we will have some more blocks. I'm not sure how many pads doing in a week, but I'll see what I get done in a week, and then hopefully it doesn't take me too terribly long to make this quilt. And I hope you stick around, and let me know if you're doing this quilt along too, and share pictures on my Facebook group. The link is down below, and thank you so much for watching.